Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony will begin momentarily. Today's ceremony is considered an outdoor ceremony and all headgear is to be worn by all military personnel. We also ask that you please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices at this time. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to historic Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall. Originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863 and changed to Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall in 2009. Its main purpose was fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today, it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Before today's review begins, the United States Army Band Pershing Zone presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections, Saber and Spurs, and the Klaxon.
Rushing so. Head. Hut.
Once again, good afternoon and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to several soldiers who are retiring after many years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's review from left to right is the United States Army Band Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Captain Lee Lamb and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Honor Guard Company, commanded by Lieutenant Sean Paul Stolarski, and led by Sergeant First Class Alfonso Roman. Next online is Doghouse Company, commanded by Captain Fisher Watkins, and led by Staff Sergeant Randall Hoover. Next online is Battle Hard Company, commanded by Lieutenant George Ladner, and led by Staff Sergeant Benjamin Negley. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Lieutenant Ryan Hanks and led by Staff Sergeant Dennis White. The last element online, dressed in the Continental Musician's Uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard, Fife, and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major Aaron Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Maxwell B. Pappas, Commander, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Staff Sergeant Trevor Kemp. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors. Advance the colors!
Poster colors. Stack. Right. Face. Please be seated. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the reviewing officials for today's ceremony. SES 2 Charles R. Alexander Jr. Chief Warrant Officer 4 Roger E. Murphy and Command Sergeant Major Akram M. Shahid. Accompanied by the hosts Major General Trevor J. Bradenkamp, Commanding General Joint Task Force National Capital Region and the United States Army Military District of Washington and Sergeant Major Joshua R. Kerrig, Operation Sergeant Major, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, The Old Guard. Or 
Post the stack. Stack. Right. Face. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. Major General Braden Kemp and Sergeant Major Kerrig are now moving into position to honor the retirees. Please feel free to applaud your soldier as they are called. Headquarters, Department of the Army Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. SES 2 Charles R. Alexander Jr. Superintendent, Arlington National Cemetery. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 4, Roger E. Murphy, Ordnance. Command Sergeant Major Akram M. Shaheed, Medical Services. <laughs> Colonel Alexander L. Carter, Civil Affairs.
Colonel Mike A. Navarro, Military Intelligence. Colonel Wendy L. Rivers, Signal Corps. <laughs> Colonel Michelle A. Soltis, Medical Corps. Colonel Craig J. Tippins, Special Forces. <laughs> Colonel David J. Woolman, Aviation. Lieutenant Colonel David B. Hansen, Military Intelligence. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Stephen G. Zhang, Military Intelligence. Lieutenant Colonel Joel Parker, Adjutant General. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Douglas J. Sackett, Judge Advocate. Lieutenant Colonel Joshua C. Shiley, Finance. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy G. Walker, Military Police. Major Waisu A. Adekone, Finance. Major Bradley C. Davis, Logistics. Major Devon O. Thomas, Public Affairs. Major Douglas M. Trippany II, Military Police. Major Darinell D. Urena Fabian, Signal Corps. <laughs> Chief Warrant Officer 4, Michael L. Pardo, Military Police. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jessica E. Buck, Judge Advocate. Chief Warrant Officer 4, 
Chief Warrant Officer 2, Peter W. Davidovich, Aviation. <laughs> Command Sergeant Major, Ryan D. Broden, Aviation. Command Sergeant Major James L. Bryant, Signal Corps. <laughs> Sergeant Major Tanya M. Brown Berenger, Adjutant General. Sergeant Major Tamika H. Garrett, Adjutant General. <laughs> Sergeant Major Nicholas C. Creener, Military Police. First Sergeant David Ortiz, Infantry. <laughs> Master Sergeant Robin E. Johnson, Adjutant General. Master Sergeant Michael S. Lydiard, Infantry. <laughs> Sergeant First Class Damian F. Johnson, Adjutant General. Sergeant First Class William C. Little, Adjutant General. Sergeant First Class Rigel Lavelle, Judge Advocates General Corps. Sergeant First Class LaShawn K. Ross, Ordnance. Sergeant First Class Stephanie R. Shelton, Signal Corps. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Staff, right? Face.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Bradenkamp. Well, good afternoon, and I'm glad to hear we've got a pretty motivated group today. I'm not sure, sure if that's because it's cool in here, cool and dry in here, and wet, out, wet outside, but, uh, but it's great to have everybody here. Uh, distinguished guests, senior leaders, command sergeants, majors, friends, and above all, soldiers and families, to be honored here today. Thanks for making the time to attend this retirement ceremony and welcome to historic Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. On behalf of the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine E. Warmoth, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Randy George, and the Sergeant Major of the Army, Sergeant Major uh, Mike Weimer, welcome to another beautiful day in the nation's capital. <laughs> it is a great day to be a soldier. Before I address our distinguished retirees and families, I would like to take a moment and thank those who worked so hard to make today such a special occasion. On the floor in front of you are the soldiers of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, the Army's oldest active duty infantry regiment. You look tremendous, and your professionalism and precision honors those retiring here today. Thanks for your hard work, dedication, and for serving in our Army. Thanks as well to the members of the U.S. Army's band, Pershing Zone, as always, you look and sound amazing and make this, these ceremonies all the more special. So please join me in a round of applause for all these soldiers. So the soldiers retiring here today joined the Army to be all they could be. In fact, our oldest retiree, today, retire here, retiree here today joined the Army during the Cold War when be all you can be was the Army's motto before. So Ray, thanks for your 45 years of service to our nation. <laughs> Most of those here today joined the Army following Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Others after America was attacked on 9-11, but all have stood ready to meet the challenges and uncertainties of the global war on terror that brought almost two decades of continuous combat operations. They stand here today representing the best of America. Today we honor 35 soldiers and their families for their soldiers and civilians and their families for being all they can be and their faithful and dedicated service to our nation. Collectively they represent more than 800 years of service across our army. 800 years. With service around the globe and in a variety of combat arms, combat support, and combat service support specialties, these soldiers, leaders, and their families answered our nation's call and have not only served during a period of persistent conflict, but also led and trained our young men and women to deploy into harm's way and do our nation's bidding. Our Army and our nation owes you a debt of gratitude for your service and sacrifice that can never be fully repaid. The medal and U.S. flag are but a small token of appreciation for your service. I would like to take just a moment to talk about our flag, Old Glory. That you receive a flag today on the occasion of your retirement is significant in that it is the symbol of our nation and recognized around the world. We have fought to protect the freedoms and our way of life, and we wear it proudly on our uniform, both here at home and while deployed. The red color in our flag symbolizes the hardiness and valor which each of you has personified as a soldier and a leader in our army operating in austere conditions with limited resources to accomplish difficult missions. The white color refers, refers to the purity and innocence which you have sought to protect both here at home and abroad. And the blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice, which each of you have demonstrated in the conduct of your duties as officers and non-commissioned officers. I am sure the flag holds special meaning for each of you, as it should, given your service to our nation. As you walk out of Conmey Hall today, take solace in knowing that you leave behind an enduring legacy that lives on in the countless soldiers you have trained, mentored, and inspired. 
The Army is better because of your service. Ladies and gentlemen, again, please join me in a round of applause for these 35 incredible soldiers and ladies. But we would be remiss if we did not take some time to thank the family members of each of these retiring soldiers and civilians here today. Your sacrifice and support over the past 20 plus years of service has been foundational to the success of each of these retirees, allowing them to accomplish their assigned missions and serve in the Army that they love. You have remained steadfast in your support during a time of war that necessitated family separations, and for that, you will never be adequately compensated. Please accept our eternal thanks on behalf of a grateful nation for, that all you, for all that you have endured as Army families. We could not fulfill our obligations to our soldiers, the Army, and the nation without the love and support of our families. So please, one more round of applause for our families. So back to those retiring here today, thanks for your service. You are warriors and soldiers for life, so I humbly ask that you take on one last task, and that is to tell the Army story. Help to maintain our all-volunteer Army by sharing your experiences with America's sons and daughters so they may be inspired to follow in your footsteps and volunteer to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We continue to serve as a shining example around the world because men and women like you have volunteered to serve. So again, on behalf of Secretary Warren, with General George, Sergeant Major of the Army Weimar, the Joint Task Force, National Capital Region, Military District of Washington, the United States Army, and a proud and grateful nation, thank you, good luck, Godspeed. This will defend and be all you can be.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in singing the Army Song. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.